I'm here in central London with Vijay Malia, one of India's most celebrated tycoons. Mr. Malia, who's made a fortune from various industries such as beer, spirits, cricket, Formula One and football, and a now defunct airline, Kingfisher, is described by the Indian government as a fugitive from justice. He's had his passport withdrawn. Mr. Malia, are you going to return to India and do you think you can reach a settlement with the banks? I definitely would like to return to India. Right now, things are flying at me fast and furious. My passport has been revoked. I don't know what the government is going to do next. But I have always maintained that notwithstanding anything else, I'm interested in a settlement with the Kingfisher Airline bankers and would like to repeat that I will reach out if they are interested in making a settlement. And you've made an offer of 440 million pounds? That is correct. And are you prepared to go higher? Well, the banks need to also consider the fact that there are other creditors uh, who also need to be paid off and satisfied. I can't possibly be seen to be giving preference uh, to the banks just because of this extraordinary pressure being put on me uh, by various government agencies. Who is behind the move to withdraw your passport? I wish I knew. Are they faceless bureaucrats or is it the Prime Minister, Mr Modi, who is a noted austere figure? All I can say is that uh, the manner in which my passport was first suspended and then revoked um, is unprecedented and was done with extraordinary haste. You I heard about it on a Saturday evening? Absolutely. By fax? By email. But uh, be that as it may... Um, and you had seven days to respond, is that right? Well, the first notice of suspension came on a public holiday last week. I replied and my reply was not considered and the passport was revoked on Saturday. Do you think that you will have to sell down some stakes in other businesses in order to raise money to reach an overall settlement? And would you be willing to do that? I have already expressed my willingness to settle with the banks. A settlement offer was proposed to the Honorable Supreme Court of India, which obviously means it was a very serious offer. And uh, now the Supreme Court has directed the Debt Recovery Tribunal uh, to dispose of the main matter in two months. But notwithstanding that legal process, my offer for settlement stands. And what is the amount that you believe is the outstanding debt that is owned as a result of the collapse of Kingfisher Airlines? Is it 520 million the pounds? The filings before the Debt Recovery Tribunal uh, by the Consortium of Bankers uh, is of a principal amount of little over 500 million pounds. The rest is towards unapplied interest. Yeah. Um, and the banks say it's 900 million. Well, I don't know whether it's the banks or the media or a combination of the two. A dangerous combination. Uh, indeed. Uh, but that's how India is. Um, I or some have never say. been able to understand where this 9,000 crore or 900 million figure came from. Uh, but as I said, uh, if there is reason and rationale all around, I think the banks can be settled along with all the other creditors. Now, you're known uh, in, the, in the Indian media and in the Indian public as the king of good times. Uh, you're often described as flamboyant. You've attended parties, you travel around. Uh, can you explain whether this is a, uh, you think this is a fair characterization or or do you think that actually you were just, say, a, a, a brand ambassador? 
I think those who need to know certainly know that I have acted as a brand ambassador for my brands in a media dark environment. Which means there's a <clears throat> prohibition on advertising of for alcohol. Absolutely. And this King of Good Times label was actually um, a slogan for the Kingfisher beer brand. Uh, for whatever reason, I was known as the King of Good Times and now, of course, indeed, the King of Bad Times. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's past me now to uh, figure out what I should have done or should not have done. Do you think you made any mistakes? Oh, sure, Did you I must have made many mistakes. Did uh, you misjudge the public mood as it turned against the kind of flamboyant multimillionaires in, in business in, in, in India? You know, we are in a democracy in India. Uh, I have been labeled a willful defaulter, which I just cannot understand. Uh, we have invested over 610 million pounds into Kingfisher Airlines. We tried everything conceivably possible to save the airline. Um, a combination of macroeconomic factors and then government policies Oil un went up to unfortunately could not save Kingfisher. But notwithstanding all that, I have uh, lived my life in my normal way. People think I'm flamboyant. Actually, I'm quite simple. That's quite a flamboyant uh, yeah, Absolutely. There's nothing wrong in wearing a colorful piece of clothing. But uh, to cut a long story short, uh, I've worked hard all my life. I want to try and settle with these banks and then live my life in peace. And that's my focus right now. Do you think that you will ever be able to go back into business in India? Well, I, I currently have businesses in India, which uh, I don't intend to sell. Um, and these businesses are doing very well. Uh, you asked me whether I could go back to India. Well, if I had a passport, I could. But right now I'm in forced exile. Vijay Malia, the forced exile, the man described as a fugitive in ju from justice, but who is, says he's willing to settle with the banks. Not only that, willing to clear my name and prove to the agencies concerned that I am absolutely not guilty of any one of these preposterous charges of uh, diverting funds out of Kingfisher Airlines and buying properties and stuff like that. And I mean, just to be clear, that's your contention, your absolute, your word is that you have never diverted money from your companies overseas to fund yeah. either your family or your personal interests. That is absolutely correct and forms part of my sworn affidavit before the Honorable Supreme Court of India. And uh, if our government so decides, let them appoint the world's best forensic auditor to come and audit the accounts of Kingfisher, uh, audit how all the bank loans were utilized, and I'm sure they're not going to find anything because that is the truth. Vijay Malia, thank you for talking to the Financial Times. Thanks.